Saturday morning here on the streets of Durban. There's a global call for climate action. We're here today because our governments are delaying the process of acting on climate change. They're now saying there's no new treaty coming till 2020. That's another eight years of talking. What we need is action. We need to reduce our emissions. We need adaptation. We need money to help for sustainable development. I see firsthand the effects of uh, the environment uh, when land territories are being eroded away from the mountain sea ice and the oceans coming in uh, to where you have to relocate your whole village. experiencing tremendous climate change, extreme weather patterns where they shouldn't be happening. We're seeing increasing desertification. Botswana is a semi-desert. Two-thirds of the country is semi-desert. We have very erratic rains. And, you know, change in climate. We used to have rains. Now it means we are almost drought stricken all year round. What would you say to people living in rich countries who don't believe in climate change? I would tell them that every time they use something in a selfish way, people here are suffering the impact. It's like they're taking it away from a person here. If they, don't, if they do not believe it, we are suffering the effects here. We're starving. We are having people who cannot go to school anymore because they just can't afford it. There's no question that we have to intensify our resistance and that resistance has to include our willingness to put ourselves, our lives on the line and our willingness to go to prison if necessary. But the government of the United States, the government of the UK, the governments in the European Union, they don't appear to know the reality of what the people in their countries are saying. Listen to the people, you represent the people, you cannot just listen to the corporates. They are playing the script of cooperation, the polluters. This cannot be allowed to continue. It does impact a lot because I can't grow enough crops to feed my family. Then I live in poverty. Then not just me, other families too. Because most of the households in Botswana are female-led. They are led by women. backbone of the country have to fend for their families and now with the climate change we don't know we are doomed <laughs> People are very concerned about how their life will look in five years' time, in ten years' time, where the possibilities and opportunities are for the young generation here in Africa, but also in small island states and other vulnerable places. Uh, I'm hearing that uh, they're really concerned in the small island states with the rising sea levels, and that's going to escalate. That's already predicted. You know, where did these large populations of indigenous peoples from the Pacific, where did they move to? just commitment and a fair commitment to reducing carbon emissions. The big issues will be sorting out the, the, um, the, the climate fund, sorting out an agreement on the sources of finance to make sure that there's money to go into the fund so it's not just an empty vessel, um, and also critically agreeing on the future of the Kyoto Protocol and also the, 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 the pathway to a more comprehensive legally binding agreement shortly after. I think generally right now we have to have peaceful but active civil disobedience and non-violent direct action. I anticipate the Arab Spring, the Indignados, the Occupy movement and so on is showing that citizens have had enough with the dominance of our political processes 
the decisions we make about our environmental future and so on are being taken by big corporations. They've captured power. Don't be a fossil fool! Don't be a fossil fool! Don't be a And that's why we're here to to lift up our voice, telling these world leaders to make a commitment to our second round of the Kyoto Protocol, because that's the only international legally binding agreement that uh, will hold the polluters accountable. The current pledges that are on the table, even if implemented in full, leave us miles away from a safe climate trajectory. It's not just NGOs saying that, some of the world's leading in the, you know, authoritative institutions such as the United Nations Environment Programme, the International Energy Agency, who are not renowned for being tree huggers, are saying that we need to see global emissions peaking really at the middle of this decade at the latest, otherwise we are heading in for a very, very dangerous future. There needs to be a clear steer for ministers to get real on ambition and agree a process to ratchet up the targets now. I'm